Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. So we will do the prelude and we will get started on a rainy, damp day in Lebanon. Prelude is sunrise. Sunrise, resurrection, Jesus is alive. Sunrise, resurrection, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Sunrise, celebration, Jesus is alive. Sunrise, celebration, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Good afternoon once again, everybody. Welcome back to Love and And today, we are doing the Easter service again. So, we were, so I looked at possibly combining these two, like Monday, Thursday, and Easter together, but this service is different from Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday does not have prayer, operatory, and things like that. So, that service will be the shortened version of that will be presented at a later time. So Easter service redo today. Because we already did the second week on Saturday. So here are your announcements for today. So again, this is begin the seven weeks of Easter leading up to his ascension. So this was week one. So week two is the Thomas's doubts, like like we talked about on Saturday. The next train trip will be this Saturday, 422 to Providence and 68 to DC. We also welcomed a new member of the family on Saturday. We welcomed a Mitt's bigger dog named Stevie, but maybe thinking does that mean a new Boston is is out of the question? No. No, that is not what that means at all. It was based on a compromise that was made between myself, mom, and dad. And also, we're going to see about doing these services like Tuesday afternoons or Sundays for the rest of the way here. It just so happens that this afternoon, we happen to be home alone. And the rebroadcast, like I said, of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday will be presented sometime in the near future. Because, like I said, during that service, that service can basically be done any time of year. 
So he is alive. He is risen. Hallelujah. And receive the call to worship. Christ is risen. God's steadfast love endures forever. Death never gets the final word. God's steadfast love endures forever. Rejoice in this day of salvation. God's steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. If you please write and send me, open in him, 367, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, alleluia. Raise your joys and triumph high, alleluia. Sing ye his and earth reply, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy stain, Alleluia. Dying once he all does see, Alleluia. Where thy victory, O grave, Alleluia. The three demon work is done, alleluia. Fight the fight, the battle won, alleluia. Death and vain forbid him rise, alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. So are we now where Christ has led? Alleluia. Lay down exalted head. Alleluia. A like him, with him we rise. Alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the sky. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, this afternoon, we rejoice in this day of resurrection. We have come to celebrate the strength of your love, a love that triumphs even over death and the mighty cross, as we exult in the miracle of your incarnate love. We thank you for the opportunity to encounter the risen Christ here in our midst as we worship him, the risen King, this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship Christ, the risen King, 361.
Rise, O church, and lift your voices. Christ has conquered death and hell. As all the earth rejoices, resurrection is the swell. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the risen King. The tomb where death had laid him empty now is not declared. And then I could not contain him for the throne of life he shares. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the risen King. Out they lift its head to murmur, scoffers mock and sinners jeer. But the truth proclaims a wonder, thoughtful hearts receive with cheer. He is risen, he is risen, now receive the risen king. We acclaim your life, O oh Jesus, now we sing your victory. In and hell may seek to seize us, but your conquest keeps us free. Stand in triumph, stand in triumph, worship Christ the risen King. So before we get to the anthem, we have some sad news to announce. We that new friend that we got over the weekend, we had to take him, take her back to the shelter. Obviously, try going after Willow. That is a no-no. But so the door is open for a new Wilbur, as that is the goal here, as we get to the latter stages of this class, and obviously into the summer. So the anthem is Behold the Rising of the Sun.
All right, it is operatory time, being that this is the time for you guys just to subscribe and to continue to check out some of those other videos as well. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering? So the holy heart.
Close your eyes. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. It is with the holy heart that we are your very own. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world as we have made it to the end of this spring semester and a new Boston is right around the corner. So all of this we ask in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, so the reading today is actually from Luke. Luke 24, looking for the living one in a cemetery. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb. So they walked in, but once inside, they couldn't find the body of the master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down and worshipped. The men said, Why are you looking for the living one in the cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on the cross, and in three days rise up? Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all of this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Madeline, Joanna, Mother Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling them these things to the apostles, but the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to, he stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. He walked away and puzzled, shaking his head. So there are theories out there of... Did he really die on the cross? Did he, uh, how does one die and come back to life, so to speak? Well, this past Saturday, I talked about like the 10 different things that we didn't know about crucifixion, how there were different type of crosses, how you had the uppercase T, you had this, and you had this, which is, the most commonly used cross. Historically speaking, crucifixion wasn't just what we read about. It, ha it happens in third world country. Like every Good Friday, you see like in the Philippines or in some other, some third world country, you see that scene being reenacted again and again and again. But the thing is, these people probably are trained or something. Now, I'm not sure how you can be trained to go 
when you're on a cross and you have nail holes in your have the nail holes in your hands and your feet how do you how does that work well if you think about what he said back in galilee which is what we will look at soon when he said that he had to go do these things that were written down some 600 years before all of this because remember back on monday thursday we read isaiah 53 saying he was being he was towards but he didn't say a word meaning that he knew all of this was going to happen sooner or later it was going to happen eventually but throughout his jesus's life we see the adversities that he started that he's starting to face think about in john 11 where where we read about oh maybe it was john 9 or somewhere around there in john 9 where we read about a blind man that all of a sudden that he did this and then that then all of a sudden he could see and then you, you had people in the background whispering like like oh we gotta get rid of this guy or you know just these little side conversations that we, that everybody was having with each other so he knew that all of this was going to happen sooner or later that sooner or later he would be at that table celebrating his last meal it'd be almost like it would be almost like if he was on death row so to speak if he was put to death through lethal through through lethal injection you see this is all these people knew how to do they didn't really want to listen to what jesus had to say or you know they didn't want to hear his side of the story they only took what they had blasphemy they accused him of saying that how can you be the son of god when you know how are you doing this how are you doing that remember seeing is believing guys believing is seeing believing in ourselves that you know what we only have two more classes left plus the final exam so you know what don't go down don't go down the old road of wanting to do things our way no no believe is see believe and see for ourselves that you know that she's not here to hurt us she's here to help us and this is what peter is seeing he's looking in the tomb and he can't believe what he's seeing he sees it empty when probably the night before like saturday night he knew that jesus was in there safely and secure but the next morning all of a sudden he was gone how does that happen now when you go to theology school and seminary and do all this do all these things they actually talk about what may have happened between saturday night and sunday morning but for our purposes because this is only basically just my opinion on these things that is a conversation to be had at another time in a different place obviously in a different form of this presentation i want to talk about the situation with brian so i sent him an easter card you're probably wondering why well you never know what can happen right you never know what could happen he said thank you and that's all he has said to us i mean we'll say like good morning to him and whatnot but we don't get a response this is kind of exactly what we thought was going to happen See, this was kind of maybe a poor choice, maybe skate, maybe dancing in hot water, trying to correct to maybe to bring somebody back in the picture that obviously we had no problems with. That you know, 
we thought that, oh, he, that he was the best thing since sliced bread. Well, think about it. They say age doesn't matter when you're, adult, when you're an adult. Yes, it does matter. You figure, Brian's only 22 and I'm 28. That's a big difference in maturity from being 22 and 28. That's a big difference, guys. So did Jesus really die on the cross? We don't know. We don't know. This is what this is. Jesus is revealing to us that, you know what? You can nail me to a cross. You can do all this stuff that you that you people do. But guess what? No matter how many times you nail me to a cross, I'm still here. Remember, he did all of this as a human. Not as God, but as his own person. I think it was roughly age 30 or so that he did this. 30. But as I read in Saturday, sir, John's account, what happened, where, he, where Mary said, sir, where did you put him so I could take care of him? And then she turns around and all of a sudden he's standing right in front of her saying, Mary. And then she says, Rabboni, which means teacher. So she was the first person to see him alive. So basically, the old, the tricks that they play when they mocked and made fun of him and whatnot, nailed him to a cross and left him, left him to die. Well, guess what? That didn't work, did it? As we see in movies, we see in reenactments that as we get into the book of Acts, which is the next piece of this, they turn around and say, oh, they're talking about hit this guy again. Oh, they're talking about hit the it's like, yeah, they are talking about that guy again because he is alive to anyone who believes and sees. Seeing is believing. So if I were if I was in Brian's situation and somebody sent me a card, I would reach out to them and just say, hey, you know, maybe do you want to go catch a movie or maybe you want to do something low key, like low profile kind of thing. Maybe just to catch up, maybe to have a cup of coffee and things like that. It's simple things like this. Remember. The cross always says come. We lay our burdens down at the cross. And that's what he is doing. He probably read that Easter card and probably he realized in his mind, that, you know what? Nick really does care. Exactly. And as we think about this further, these theories about, you know, did he go into cardiac arrest? Did they uh, put him to sleep for two days or something or other? But you just you just don't know because based on what we read and what we see. Now, you're probably wondering, how did Isaiah know that this was going to happen? He probably saw other people do it. He probably saw people like his friends or people that he knew about probably got crucified as well. But the question is, how does this happen 600 years before this? And then all of a sudden now it pops up again here in the here at here in the later chapters of the of the end of the first four books. Because we because we identify who actually got crucified, who exactly 
they were he was talking about when he says he was being he was tortured but he didn't say a word like a lamb taken to be slaughtered you see we don't know who he is we're talking about who isaiah is talking about here we don't know who he is it could be you know it could be like your it could be like your neighbor next door or it could be uh somebody else you know you just don't know but in eat but at this time of year this is the new hope this is my opportunity to make peace with the english teacher we make peace with our, with brian and make peace with ourselves saying that you know what we're gonna have a new boston that's there's no doubt about that we don't need to beat that into the ground right and we know that that's going to happen but the incentive to keep going keep the line moving so that way we don't have to relive English 101 again. And then we can move on to bigger and better things. Because Jesus is alive. These theories that we read about are just theories. They can't be proven or anything like that. Those are just people's opinions. And so just a little bit of housekeeping i just wanted to say that we obviously wish stevie the best uh unfortunately that she just she just wasn't the right fit here but we did come across a boston in vermont called gino who actually is kind to other cats to cats and other animals so i passed that along to mom and we'll see what we can do with him because this is what Wilbur would want. He wants a new best friend. He wants us to be happy. In fact, the cross said come to him when it was time to say goodbye. And I guarantee you, it'll be worth it having maybe Gino. You, we don't know, but we know it'll be worth it because we got through the obstacles that got in the way. The other thing is, when you think about Thomas's doubts, now I'm just kind of just reviewing what exactly I was talking about. When you look at Thomas's doubts, when he says, at least I think it was, if he couldn't see the nail holes in his hands and feet, he couldn't, he, it would be unbelievable. Well, actually, he didn't have to, all he had to do was just realize that, you know, he had to go back in his memory and just remember that jesus said that you know said this is what's going to happen i gotta say i gotta go be handed over to people to evil people and i gotta be nailed to a cross and i'll be dead for three days but three days rise up he probably had to remember that and, the, and we all have our doubts. We doubt ourselves. Sometimes we have something made up in our in our minds that something is a certain way, or a class is a certain way, or you know, thinking that uh, maybe the Nets Boston is like Wilbur. You know, all these things like. All of these things that we just make up in our minds and to think 
And just think that it is it is this way. Well, it isn't. It's not always that way. But Jesus did for us what he said he was going to do. And this is what this is about. Peter looking in that tomb and realizing that he actually meant what he said and actually followed through. That he wasn't just telling a lie or telling a tall tale. Because this was real. That this actually happened at this date or on this day. That is why we go to church on Sunday. There's a lot more that can be said about the theories and resurrection and whatnot. And we will look at that later this week. Amen.